All right, thanks for joining me for the notes from day one of the balancing reactions and stoichiometry packet. Uh, within this packet, we'll be exploring balancing reactions and using stoichiometry to make calculations, um, such as you know, uh, seeing how much products we can, can create and seeing what limits a reaction and stuff like that. So within this unit, uh, we're, we're looking at balancing reactions and conservation of matter today. Then we're going to look at how those equations and the mole ratios help us solve problems. Uh, then we'll apply that to stoichiometry. And we have a couple of labs. We have formula of a compound lab and reaction stoichiometry lab. Plus, we'll be looking at limiting reactant uh, in here as well. So I will have a second post with the little lab experience for day one on page two, but for this broadcast, we'll be looking at page three, the notes on um, balancing reactions and conservation of matter. All right, so let's take a look at that. So with balancing reactions, what we're really interested in is looking at how a reaction can have the same amount of reactants and products, okay? Because in a reaction, you want to make sure that atoms don't just like disappear or you know magically show up from, from nowhere. So in a chemical reaction, you have on one side the reactants and on the other side you have products. And we just want to maintain that we have the same amount before and after. So before a reaction happens, you can look at all your reactants, and then after the reaction's done, you can look at all your products, and they should have the same weight. They should be balanced from one side to the other. And that balance is called the conservation of matter. And the conservation of matter is a pretty simple idea. It just means that in a chemical reaction, matter can uh, neither be created nor destroyed. Okay, so whatever you have, you're going to have in the end. And uh, having those balance is the key part. So in a typical nuclear, not nuclear, chemical reaction, we have reactants on one side, and then we have products on the other side. So an example of that might be pipes, like you left out some metal pipes out in the rain or you know, snow or whatever. And when you go to get them uh, in the, you know, a couple months later, then you'll find that they have undergone a chemical reaction. So what happened? The iron atoms are still there, but they have created a new compound with the oxygen from the environment to create a product. Okay, it's not like we invented or created an atom out of nothing. It's using the reactants in the area um, to create a, uh, a new product, okay? Um, and we can measure those products to see how much there are and stuff like uh, that. So that's what we're going to do. So if you were to use a simple example here uh, for number five, let's say you had to throw uh, three water balloons at your friends you know, from a six foot distance. <laughs> um, the three water balloons that you need require there to be enough um, reactants, or you can think of it like ingredients to create. So if you want three water balloons, but you only have one balloon, that's obviously not going to work. So what we have to do is water balloons don't just show up out of nowhere. We have to supply enough water and water balloons to get the necessary product out of the reaction. So in that case, we would need to add three cups of water and three balloons in order to create the three water balloons. Okay, and that's exactly how chemical reactions work. And actually baking works too. Like if you think of a recipe and you know, you're doubling the recipe, you have to double all the ingredients. So here's a recipe in chemistry. Uh, this is the creation of water using hydrogen and oxygen. In this reaction, you can see that we left little spaces in there to balance the reaction later. So we know that we're gonna have to put a number in front of the hydrogen probably, so leave a little space there. But write this in in number six, so we have H2 plus O2 yields H2O, okay? So can you see what's not balanced in that reaction, just looking at it? 
let's pull the board up here. So we have that example here. So we have H2 plus O2 gives H2O. And what I like to do with these reactions is uh, break it into the two sides. So we have reactants. On this side, and we have products on this side. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my reactants, the atoms that I see on the reactant side, and I'm going to list the atoms that I see on the product side. So we have hydrogen right here, and we have oxygen right there. And not really a surprise, but on the product side, we see hydrogen. And we see oxygen. So that checks out. We have the same amount of stuff, not the same amount of stuff, but same stuff before and after. Our job is to get the same amount of stuff on both sides. So let's look at how many hydrogens we have. How do we figure that out? Well, these subscripts, the small numbers, indicate how many of those atoms we have. So you can see here, uh, for the hydrogen, there's a two down here, meaning that we have two hydrogens. Okay, let's look at the product side for hydrogen. Product side, it still has that two subscript, so we're all good. Hydrogen is balanced. Let's look at our oxygen. On the reactant side, you can see it's O2. It's a molecular element. It has to bond with itself when it's a gas, so no surprise there. It's O2 to atoms of oxygen. But on the product side, we have a problem. H2O does not have a second oxygen. H2O2 is a thing, it's hydrogen peroxide, uh, but you can't make it in this way. So we only have one. We only have one oxygen because there's no subscript shown here. Um, so there's technically a one there that you can't see. All right, so oxygen is a balance. How do we fix that? Well, what we have to do is double this oxygen in order to balance it out. So what we're going to do, we're going to do math down here, and we're going to say, all right, so we need to have two oxygens. How do we do that? We can multiply it by two. So we can take the one oxygen we have, multiply it by two, and get that to work. We can get that to balance. Okay. Here's the trick, though. By multiplying this by two, you have to go back and add that two to the reaction in that little blank that we left earlier. So that two is going to show up here. All right, now in math class, if you write a number in front of a formula like that, you have to distribute it through the whole thing. And that's the same thing in chemistry. This two actually does multiply like we wanted it to by the oxygen, but it also multiplies by the hydrogen. Two times our hydrogen. So down here, we accidentally messed up the hydrogen that was balanced before. Two times two is four. So we have four hydrogens all of a sudden, when before we only had two. Okay, so this is very common in a reaction when you're trying to balance it. By fixing one thing, like our oxygen, you mess something else up. Because in the balanced reaction, in the reaction up here, when you add a number, it multiplies by everything in that chemical formula. So that's why the four, we have four hydrogens now, all of a sudden. So the next thing is to try to chase down that, that problem. So since we have four hydrogens, and before we only have two, we have to fix that. Okay, so that's the strategy with balancing equations. You get one thing to balance, you mess something else up, you fix that. So over here, we're gonna multiply that hydrogen by two to get it to be four, just like we did on this side. But we do have to add that two in front of the hydrogen. And this is where the reaction is really helpful because hydrogen is actually by itself. That two only multiplies by the H. It doesn't multiply by anything else. It just multiplies by the H. Okay. And 
by doing that, we end up with a balanced reaction. Okay, let's double check to make sure. So we have here four hydrogens. And if you look on this side, we also have four hydrogens. Count of four there after balancing it. And we started with oxygens with two. And now on this side, we do have two uh, that are balanced. So looking at our hydrogens and our oxygens, we have the same amount before and after. So the reaction is balanced, okay? Now, by making a list like this, like that takes a lot of time. As you get better at doing this, you'll be able to just look at the formula and say, oh, it's H2, so there's two hydrogens, there's two oxygens, and on this side, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, I need to get the right amount of oxygen. So you can add two in front and then multiply through your two times one is two, two times two is four, I only had two before, but two times two is four. That, that already had two. So I like to, once I get past, you know, getting a grocery list below basically and multiplying down there, um, you can just kind of do it in the reaction um, and save a little bit of time that way. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, ne next example. So, yeah, so did we balance that correctly? We had uh, two hydrogens, two oxygens. Afterwards, we had two hydrogens, one oxygen. So yeah, definitely not balanced. Then we go back through and double the oxygens. That doubles the hydrogens accidentally. So then we go back and double the hydrogens, and now it's balanced. All right, so let's look at something a little more complicated. So this is uh, number seven. And for this reaction, we have polyatomic ions, meaning they have more than one atom. Okay, so please write this uh, equation down in your notes there for number seven. But the key here is that polyatomic ions can be treated like an atom themselves, even though they're not technically an atom, they're, they're uh, you know, multiple atoms stuck together. That's what poly means, multiple. Um, we're gonna treat them like a single atom because it makes it much easier to balance the reaction. So you can see in our example, we have AGI reacting with Fe2, parentheses CO3, end of parentheses three. Um, that CO3 is a polyatomic ion. It has a carbon and three oxygens. Um, and in the products, you can see it's exactly the same. It's still CO3. Um, so that, you know, it, it comes out the same. So we can treat it like an atom, even though it's actually four atoms stuck together. After the reaction, we have FeI3 and Ag2CO3. So that's our reaction. And let's look at balancing it here on the whiteboards. All right, this one is a great deal harder um, because it's got a polyatomic ion. But we're just gonna use the same strategy and look at the, uh, the products and reactants, okay? I'm gonna divide this reaction between the products, I mean reactants. products. And we're going to make a list of all the atoms and polyatomic ions uh, that we see. So on the reactant side, if you just work uh, right to left, right, left to right, there we go. We have uh, AG, and we'll worry about the numbers of them here in a second. And then we have iodine, AG, I, then we have iron, Fe, and then next to the iron, we have the CO3. So that's the key is that we're gonna count CO3 as an atom, even though it's technically four stuck together. On the other side, everything's shuffled around, but I'm gonna put it in the same order just because it makes it a little easier to balance. 
So you can see we have silver, AG. Uh, we have iodine. And we still have iron right there. And CO3 is over here now. All right, so we do have all the atoms represented before and after the reaction, but let's look at the numbers to see how that compares. So on this side of the reaction, we have uh, a silver here. You can see it doesn't have any subscripts to speak of, so there's only one. And on this side, the silver has a two subscript. Okay, that two subscript means we have two silvers. So that's not balanced, that's not good. All right, let's look back at our iodine on this side of the reaction. Again, no subscripts, so we have one iodine. Looking on this side, we have three. Another problem, iodine is in balance. All right, now let's look at our iron. Iron is Fe2, so we have two of those, Fe2. And on this side, Fe, no two. Fe is one, only one iron on that side. So that's also not balanced. All right, lastly, carbonate. Carbonate is in parentheses here and it has a three on the outside. That means there are three carbonates. And this is why it's such a time saver because if you wanted to count the carbons and the oxygen separate, you'd have to distribute that three in there. And you technically have three carbons and nine of the oxygen. So we don't want to do that. We just want to say we have three carbonates. And then over here, you can see hopefully no parentheses, no numbers. It's just CO3, so there's only one. Okay, so we have <laughs> nothing balanced, right? We have one silver, now we have two. One iodine, three iodine. Two irons, one iron, and three carbonates, and one carbonate. So nothing is balanced. This does not abide by the conservation of matter, which is the law. It has to. So it's our job to balance it, to make it, uh, you know, follow the rules, basically. So how, where do you even start? Everything is not balanced. How do you decide where to go? The best way to balance these reactions is to start with anything that has a parenthesis and balance that first. Basically, you want to take the most complicated part of the whole reaction, which is this guy, and try to balance the parts of that. The most complicated part of the most complicated compound is the carbonate with the parentheses and the three. All right, so I'm going to try to get this carbonate to balance on this side by multiplying it by huh, two, wait a second, there's three of them. Multiply it by three. All right, so in the balanced reaction, I'm multiplying my carbonate by three to get three of my carbonates. The carbonate before had three, so we need to have three afterwards as well. Now, if you remember from the previous example, when you do work down here, you do have to show it in the equation above. That three goes here in front of our silver. All right, so that does multiply, you can see, by the silver and the carbonate, as we wanted it to, it multiplies by the carbonate to get us three, which does balance the carbonate, but now you can see it's making the silver even worse. The silver wasn't balanced before, and now it's even less balanced because it's going to have six. Okay, three times two gives you six. Six of uh, the silver. So again, the strategy was to try to balance the most complicated part of the most complicated piece, which was the carbonate, and that just messed up our silver. Another strategy that we used last time is you fix the things you messed up. So we messed up our silver. I'm gonna go ahead and balance the silver now in my next step. So here we had two times three is six. Let's get six over here. This is a pretty big number uh, for balancing. We're actually gonna multiply this by a six, okay? That way we can get that to balance. But by doing the six, you know, one times six is six, that's showing up up here in the balanced reaction. 
and it does multiply by the silver like we need it to, but you can see now it's also multiplying by the iodine. Okay, the, the I is also being multiplied by six, and that will give us six iodine, which messes that up, right? It wasn't balanced before anyway, but now it's even worse. We have six over here, and on this side we only have three. So, because it's I3. So we want to get that to balance as well. What do we multiply that by then? We have to multiply that by a two. I wish there was people here to tell me these things. Um, makes it a little easier. So we're going to multiply three by two, and that's going to give us six, which will balance the ida. okay? By putting this two here though, just like before, anytime you do math down here, you have to put the number in the blank spot. We do have to put the two up in the reaction. So that two is for the iodine, and it will therefore also be multiplied by the iron. Okay, we did multiply the iodine by two to get six, but it's also multiplying by the iron. To get six, uh, to get two, to get two, which is actually kind of awesome because if you look before, there were two previously in the reaction, and now we kind of fixed it. Okay, by chasing all the problems that we need, eventually you end up with a balanced reaction like we have here. Let's just do a check through to make sure that it worked out. So. All right, going through it, we have six silver. We did that over on this side, got that to balance. We had gotten six iodine, and then we fixed it over on this side as well. The reaction started with two iron, and we kind of fixed that accidentally. And the first thing we did was balance our carbonates. So this reaction, is now balanced. Okay. Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to have to make this whole list, especially when you're doing a lot of them, like for homework and stuff like that, again, writing the numbers above is kind of helpful. So let's just show that here quickly. This six distributes, so we have six silver and six iron. Here we have two iron, because we have B2. And we have three carbonates. Over here, we have two times the one iron is two iron, and two times three iodine is six iodine. And then three times the two silver is six silver, and three times the one carbonate is uh, three carbonates. Then you can look back three carbonates, three carbonates, check. We have three silver, uh, six silver, six silver, check. Six iodine, six iodine, check, and two iron, two iron. So um, that's just another uh, strategy to balance those reactions. Okay. So let's check on that example. So we went through, listed everything. Nothing was balanced, of course. But uh, first thing we want to do is uh, try to get. Well, this one, they try to get the iron to balance first, but it still works out the same way. And you balance it by multiplying everything, basically, except for the iron and the carbonate. You notice, hopefully, that the carbonate and the iron from the most complicated part of that equation actually don't get multiplied. That's very common in these reactions, is that the worst looking part drives the whole reaction. Okay, so here's some practice. Um, please pause the video here. This is in your packet on page three. So pause the video here and do those three. And uh, I will uh, pause me and get those set up on a whiteboard so that we can do those uh, together. If I can figure out how to do that. We can do that, right? All right, hopefully you uh, gave these a good shot and uh, we'll just take a look at them together here. Um, 
to see if we can get these to balance, okay? So I'm gonna use the, uh, the kind of clicker method, if you will. Uh, if you get stuck, you can always make the list underneath of the uh, reactants and products. Um, but looking at this compound, I can see that we have uh, potassium there, and the potassium technically has a one, so there's one potassium. Uh, we have one chlorine here, because there's a, you know, nothing really shown down here. And we have uh, three of the oxygens, because it's O3. After the reaction, we have one potassium still, and we have one chlorine still, so it's all it's looking good so far. But the oxygen has two, this is O2. So there's our problem. And uh, this is a very common issue with reactions and balancing. You can see that um, we have three oxygens before and only two afterwards. So you might wonder, well, how do you get that to balance? Um, you know, last time we just had to like multiply by two and stuff like that to get those to balance. But here we're actually using a uh, common multiple. Uh, because we want them to multiply to get the same thing. So if this is a two and that's a three, the least common multiple is six, is six. So what I wanna do is get six on this side by multiplying by three. And I wanna get six on the reactant side by multiplying this by two. which will work. Problem is that it also distributes and multiplies by my potassium and my chlorine, which before I only had one of, and it was balanced, but now those are both going to twos because I'm multiplying them by two, okay? On this side, it was one and one, but now it's not balanced because we have two and two before. So what do we have to write here? Hopefully you got that, that it had to multiply this by two as well. By multiplying this by two, we do end up with two of the potassiums and two of the chlorines and balancing the reaction. If you take a double check, we have two potassiums here and here. We have two of the chlorines here and here, and we have six of the oxygens here and here. So that reaction is balanced. All right, looking at the next one, we have iron, not, oh, yeah, iron and oxygen making iron oxide on this side. Using the same idea, you can see iron is all by itself, so there's only one of them. And we have two of the oxygens. After the reaction, we have two of the iron, and we have three of the oxygen with a little subscript of three there. So nothing is balanced, um, and the problem is everything, but again, it looks a lot like this one, right? We have two oxygens on one side and three on the other. Just like we have two oxygens on one side, group this side, and three on the other. So common multiple, again, is six. That's a very common thing that has happened, and that does happen here. So to get an equal amount of oxygen on either side, we're going to need to get the multiple six. So this one would be multiplied by three. Three times two is six. And then on this side, we multiply this by two. Because three times two is six. It does multiply by the iron as well. We had two iron before. Now we're going to have four. Uh, sorry, times two. So we have four iron on that side, and we need to get that to balance over here. Fortunately, iron is all by itself. So we can just multiply the iron by four, and that makes it a four on that side and balances our equation. So we have four iron before, four iron afterwards. We have six oxygen before, and six oxygen afterwards, so that's balance. All right, with a four, three, two.
All right, let's look at the last example. This one's more complicated because it's got a polyatomic ion, an ion with more than one atom in there. And you can see that it's the same before and after. We have NO3, NO3. So how do we approach this one? Same way. We're going to look at our <laughs> butterfingers over here. We're going to look at how many we have. So we have two iron. And again, we're going to treat the NO3 like an atom. So there's actually three of them here. And then we have one lithium. After the reaction, we have Li2, so we have two lithium. NO3, we only have one NO3. There's no parentheses or numbers like we had before. So there's only one of those. And we have one iron tucked here in the corner. Okay. Uh, so if you look at this, it's, uh, nothing is balanced. Nothing is balanced, everything is uh, wrong and messed up. So using the strategy that we used before, you want to try to comp uh, balance the most complicated part, which would be the nitrate. Uh, the nitrate, we had three before, and we only have one of them afterwards. So I'm going to try to balance that. We need three nitrates. Multiply this by three. One times three is three. Uh, three times two is six. So we have six lithium now. So the other strategy is fix what you broke. So we, we messed up the lithium. We have six of those. Let's go over here and get six of those. Lithium is by itself. So we can multiply it by whatever we want. And it won't affect anything else. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to multiply the lithium by six to get that to balance. Easy peasy. That's balanced now. The last thing, as we balance the nitrate, we balance the lithium now. The last thing is the iron. And you can see that iron is actually by itself on this side uh, in the products. We had two iron before and one now. So I'm going to multiply this by two. And that will give us two. And that's what we had before. So everything is balanced now. If you look, we have two iron in this and two iron over here. We have three nitrates and we have three nitrates on this side. And we ended up with six lithium and we have six lithium here. So now this reaction is balanced. All right. So. What I want you to do for more practice with these equations is to complete this page here. Um, this page, what page is that? Four. Uh, you have these, oops, sorry. These equations down here to balance. You can see we have uh, spots in there to write all your numbers. Um, sometimes they're already balanced. Those are the hardest ones to balance because you're looking at it like, how do I do that? Um, so, but you know, you just put ones in there if it's uh, already balanced, okay? So when you put the numbers in here, um, those are called coefficients and uh, you have a string of coefficients basically. So uh, for the example, you can see up here, it took a two, one, two to balance it. Two, there, one, and then two. So there's a string of coefficients that, that match that here in the number find, okay? So instead of a word find, it's a number find. As you do these, just look for them up here. If you're bad at number finding, um, <laughs> then uh, just, just get these to balance if you can. If you don't find it up here though, it's probably messed up down here. You probably balanced it wrong. But these are great practice. Um, so go ahead and uh, finish that up. And uh, we will meet up with you guys to go over that at a later date. All right, thanks for sticking with me.